everybody, it's Martha and I am back with another video. This one has been highly, highly requested. It took me long enough, but today we are talking about Rose in the Embers. But before we do, make sure you go ahead, click that red button down below and subscribe for more visual novel and garbage content. I love to have you here. This is a channel by a nerd lady for nerd ladies and other nerds, but I checked and my audience is 92% female, so if you are a nerdy female identifying person, why not join the family, my friends? Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. Basic premise. You are a country bumpkin from a very small village and you were just sold to an inn in the capital city of Tokyo. So off you go, being sent off to go work in this inn, and the first night you work in this inn, you're sent off to go serve somebody at a big party, and it ends up being a creep, and this creep wants to use you for sex, and you're like, whoa, 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 I did not sign up for this. So off you run, you know, shaming the inn, because, you know, selling people to be used in that way in the Taisho era was a normal thing, unfortunately, but uh, this man who's trying to use you is shocked by a, a gathering of very rich, important figures in the capital. One, two, three, four. There's four. Four of them. Yeah. And so they're stopped. You are, it sounds like kissed by the baddest bitter, so you are bought. They buy your freedom, but in this case they actually, like, let you go. Like, you know, there's no, like, you have to do exactly as I say. No, it's like, hey, come with us. We're not gonna use you for sex. It will be fine. And I'm like, yay, that's exactly what they should have done in Kiss by the Baddest Bitter. Anyway, so that's the basic, you know, prologue. That's what you get. And like I said, this was set in the Taisho era of Japan. Now, Taisho era was after the Meiji period, which was after the Edo period. So the Edo period was very peaceful and prosperous. And then the Bakumatsu Revolution happened. The Meiji era happened. Uh, and, and that was, you know, a, a battle. This is very simplified. This is a battle to decide whether the shogunate would continue or whether Western influence would continue and the type of government of Japan would be changed. The type of government of Japan changed, and so the Taisho era is this very, it's a very short period of history in Japanese history, but it is so interesting to me. It's like one of my favorite periods of Japanese history. So everything has this really interesting mix of traditional Japanese culture and Western culture because things were starting to come over. This was kind of the turning point of Japan becoming more westernized. So you have like this game is so aesthetically pleasing to me. The costumes Oh, oh my god, like MC dressed in a kimono with a maid, o a maid apron over it, sign me up. I am all about it. And then the men wearing like stiff button down shirts underneath their kimono and hakama instead of juban, just, just kill me now. The, the aesthetic, that's, I was drawn into this game by the aesthetic because Taisho era is my aesthetic. I was gonna do a Taisho era coordinate for this video, but then I realized you'd only see this much of me, and <laughs> I'll do a photo shoot later. But, aesthetic AF, point number one. Point number two, again, your freedom is bought, but you are helped to gain a better life, working in a better place, not being held to certain conditions. Good stuff. Okay. So, anyway, that's the general idea, the general points and impressions of this game. So, going into the men, you have options. Kyosuke, the, you know, head socialite, head, you know, fancy family, wealthy aristocratic family in Tokyo. So he is like, you know, top tier. You have Tsukumo, the enigmatic, mysterious author. Uh, who lives on the outskirts of the capital, but still does quite well for himself. You have a painter whose name escapes me. He is a painter who lives at the inn that you work in in the prologue. And he, he's, he's the sexy type. He's got the longer hair, the kimono draped, you know, off the shoulder, doing all the sexy things. And number four, the soldier, the commander, whose name also escapes me, I haven't played their routes yet, but you have a choice of four at the beginning and then they have just 
uh, teased at a fifth route coming soon, and the fifth guy runs the popular establishment, uh, Omurice Cafe, or at least it's popular among the guys you're hanging out with. Uh, and I love me some Omurice, you know me, and he's very attractive, so I'm excited for his route coming soon. So technically, overall, there are five guys for you to choose from. Now the first route I chose was Kyosuke because at the time y'all requested this video, his was the only route available. Um, but I chose it just because he seemed A, he's the canon route, and B, he just seemed like a pretty interesting guy. So let's get to some good points about Kyosuke. A, very handsome. B, very charming. Good sense of humor. I honestly, he's, He's not up to Yamato level, but like, he is a close second in as far as canon routes go. Like, he's one of the most interesting canon characters I have seen in a Voltage game because he's witty, he's educated, he's charming, he's just fun. I would really enjoy having a conversation with Kyosuke or just like hanging out with him if he were a real person because I enjoy his sense of humor and just the way he sees the world and thinks about things. The backstory is juicy, my friends. It is good if you want some good old-fashioned melodrama, soap opera, k-drama, telenovela, melodrama. This is the route for you. This game is the game for you, but especially this route. Mmm. Classic, you know, rich mother storms in out of nowhere. You're not good enough for my son, you whore. You know, of course. And he hates his mother, so there's the tension between him and his mother, but you don't know why, and I'm not going to spoil it. But it's, it is a good, thick plot twist, and it's, mm, no, 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 it's juicy. Steak level juice, my friends. It is good. I, I have not enjoyed such a dramatic plot line in an Otome game for quite some time. I have been getting used to a lot of very similar plot points in Voltage games. Um, and it's actually just, I, I really enjoy melodrama. I know I've said this a lot. How many times can I say melodrama in one video? I don't know. Count them for me in the comments, but it's good. If you like K-dramas, you will like this route, except you'll like it even more because the guy, the rich guy, is actually nice and good rather than like being a butthead the entire time. So I, mmm, I was just very, very pleased with how Kyosuke as a character was written. A plus voltage. The only thing I didn't like about Kyosuke's route was well, it's not to say that like I hated it or I super disliked it, but the ending to me was confusing. It was left very open-ended, you know, what's gonna happen next? So I'm assuming they're gonna have 80 billion like epilogues and sequels and things for you to buy, and I'm probably gonna buy them just because, you know, I wanna know what happens to these two and how they end up because that first season did not give me enough information. So that's really the only thing I did not like about Kyosuke's route because everything else was fantastic. <laughs> Applause to you, Voltage. That, that was a well done route. Now one thing, one thing more that I did notice about Kyosuke's route is that it reminded me very much of a lot of the princely routes in Be My Princess. Girl from a common status falls in love with a very, you know, royal or high-ranking uh, aristocratic family member in society, and it's the whole star-crossed lovers, classism kind of thing. So that reminded me a lot of Be My Princess, so I kind of enjoyed that, and it brought me a bit of nostalgia uh, as to why I got no Otome games in the first place, but it added more of a twist because there, there is more to Kyosuke than meets the eye, you know, which, you know, involves his mother and all that kind of junk, but it, it, it took the thing that got me into Otome games and then, like, brought it up a step higher, which is something I definitely, definitely enjoyed, so y'all were right. I admit, Kyosuke is wonderful and amazing. You were right. <laughs> From now on, I'm gonna be playing more than one route, at least two, before I give a full review, because there can be a lot of stark contrast in routes of these games. So, originally when I played the prologue, 
I really liked Tsukumo, the author, the most because like he popped up and I was like, ooh, ooh, you are my type. Like the dark curly hair and the glasses and the crisp button up shirt with the kimono was good. Ooh, but I was like, I have to play Kyosuke first because I promised them I would play Kyosuke first. So I played Kyosuke first and then I waited a little bit and then I played Tsukumo. And boy, I'm glad I did. You still get some good melodrama in his route, but it is of a different sort. I noticed that each of the routes discuss uh, or, you know, uh, have plot points related to a specific issue. While Kyosuke's route dealt with classism uh, and like upward movement of social classes or what different social classes should and shouldn't do, Tsukumo's route dealt with, um, ethnic discrimination and I'm not going to spoil anything but boy oh boy it gets deep and it gets a little dark and it's it's good at first you think there's some kind of magical mystical you know demon kind of thing but no 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 it is just the monster that is humanity and it is good anyway that that's the kind of deep point for Tsukumo's route but there's also He's quirky. He's he's the quirky author type. Like if you like Seiki, you will also like Tsukumo. Now Tsukumo is not the debonair, like flirtatious, sexy kind of author, but he still has those interesting quirks that he's got while he works. Like one of his like little quirks is sometimes he'll just survive days on pickled daikon radish and like I could do that because like pickled radish is one of my favorite things ever to eat and I was like I can relate to that. Tsukumo is a very kind character and he has this kind of secretive part of him that just it makes you want to know more. The more he tries to conceal the more you want to like peel back the layers and it just it, it just keeps you wanting to play more and wanting to read more. I was so sleepy by the time I finished this game. I was you know slapping myself to keep myself up so I could finish this game because I was so tired, but I wanted to figure out everything. And that's what I like an ultimate game to do to me. You know, it's, it's, it's so good that you just have to finish it. And I love that. The suspense, you know, the keeping the reader wanting more. The writing in this game through both routes I played was just so wonderfully done. I don't know if they hired a new writer. It seems like it because this seems, you know, it takes voltage tropes that we know and love, but it makes them even better. Speaking of writing, MC in this game, she is my new homegirl. This is my new favorite MC in voltage games, period. Well, yes, actually, yes, she is good. You know, she starts out very, you know, very naive and, you know, she has the same kind of qualities that most Voltage MC has, but she grows. MC gets character development. MC gets sassy. She stands up for herself. She speaks her feelings. She has options to say things that she really feels or say things she's really thinking. When a lot of times you don't even get that option in Japanese Voltage games. So the fact that they are giving her more of a personality and making her more of a three dimensional character makes me so, so happy. And it stood out so much and it still kept consistent throughout both of the routes I played. And huh, you bet, since I like this game so much, I am going to be playing all five of the routes that they have because I'm obsessed. But I'm really hoping that through the next three routes, they will continue to keep her sassy and independent and funny and interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Voltage, for making her interesting and for giving her eyeballs. Girl has got eyeballs. Her bangs and here and there's eyeballs. Like, you know how much that bothers me and I know how much it bothers you too. So if you haven't played this yet, just play it because the MC has eyeballs. Like if nothing I said made any sort of sense or if nothing I said hit home for you, girl has eyeballs. She has expressions. She's interesting to look at, not only to play, but to look at. So thank you. Bless 
Rose and the Embers MC, bless her. Like, she, she is so good. I love her. Y'all, I cannot talk enough about how much I love this game. I could go on even more about how aesthetic the art is and how I love this era, how I love the guys, the music, the MC. Honestly, this is the best game that Voltage has put out in years. Years. Like, yeah, Starcross Myth was great and I was obsessed, but like, this, this tops it all. I am like, stupefied. Like, I am amazed at how good this game is. Like, let, let's just take a moment. Like, let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Is this the best game that Voltage has put out in years or do you disagree? You know, what are things that you like or what are things that maybe you didn't like about this game? Because when I think about it, it's hard for me to find things that I don't like. So, anyway, that was just basically me gushing about this game for a while, but you wanted to know what I thought, so that's what I think. <laughs> I love this game, I'm gonna be playing more of it and um, According to a little secret special video that will be up tomorrow, right here, you will be able to see more of my reactions to it in another place, but that will be released tomorrow. Anyway, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you felt about this game, whose routes you've played, are you looking forward to the Omurice Cafe guy? Uh, let me know who I should try next after I've played Kyosuke and Tsukumo. Uh, I was thinking of going for the painter next, but let me know. We'll see. Anyway, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And again, make sure you hit that red button and subscribe. Please become a part of this family. We are supportive of each other and we all love the same garbage. And that is really all I can ask for. Also, make sure you subscribe to my vlog channel for shenanigans. I'll have an all-con vlog up very soon. I am editing that right now. And make sure you tune in every Thursday for a live stream right here on YouTube. I pick a visual novel, we play through it, and we have a good time. We finished up uh, Karma's route in Cinderella Phenomenon yesterday. Boy, oh boy, that was a lot of work, but we finished it, guys. We did it, and it was great. I have a poll on my Twitter right now. It'll be up until Wednesday night on whether I should play another route from Cinderella Phenomenon or if I should play a new game. Go ahead, answer that poll on Twitter, and give me a follow, because I give all of my stream updates on Twitter. That's it for me today. Look forward to a new video ex uh, announcing a very exciting project for me tomorrow here on this channel and I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I hope I will see you next week for another video and another stream and just in social media in general. I love y'all so so much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!